papers are loose. So there's tape up there, there's markers up there if you want to write your name. You can do that after. Uh, but I wanted to, for time's sake, just kind of get things moving. Um, so if you want to do that and make it a little bit more organized after, that's totally fine. I'll leave all the materials right up there on the stage. Okay, so first let's look at the schedule really quick. Uh, you can see all the classes are laid out there in order, um, and we're, we're going to be meeting every Wednesday and every Sunday uh, all the way through November 4th. Uh, the actual last class, though, should be November 7th. That's when we take the last quiz. Uh, and so we won't have um, a first principles lesson on the 7th of November, but we will have the quiz and then probably just a general lesson. Um, so you can see the schedule there. Keep that so that you know uh, what, what our plan is. Um, of course... Then we've got the introduction to the course here, so we'll go through that really quick here. Uh, number one, course requirements. Obviously, you want to attend every class. Uh, attendance will be part of the scoring. Um, Stephanie's, that was Stephanie's idea. So. Amen. Wait, don't do that to her. Oh, she's not here. Oh, okay. Amen. 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 I wasn't trying to throw her to the bus. I didn't know she was Okay, number two, uh, we're going to take an exam uh, on each study at the beginning uh, of the next class. Uh, and then number three, do the homework assignments on time as outlined in the schedule. So the schedule gives you your, your homework assignments uh, and when they're due. Uh, just so you can see the assignments there, uh, for example, besides trying to memorize the studies, you also want to memorize the books of the Bible uh, in order. Uh, so, for example, in our next class will be tested. Part of the test is to be able to say, okay, well, like, what's, for example, the fifth book of the Bible? Uh, Genesis through Second Chronicles. Try to have that memorized. You won't have to write out all the books. I'll just ask you a question like, what's the seventh book? Or what's the tenth book? Or something like that. Uh, and then, of course, progressively, we'll add uh, to the memorization there of the books. And by the time of the fifth homework uh, on October 21st, you'll have memorized all of the books of the Bible, all 66 books. Uh, you also see that for homework assignment number one, uh, the second assignment there is to sign up for the Good News email. So on the quiz, this is what will happen. I'll just say, did you sign up for the Good News email? If you say yes, you write down yes. If you say no, you write down no. Yes is the right answer. No is the wrong answer. Okay. Uh, and then... The same exact thing for readkitmckeen.com. So homework assignment number six, uh, you'll read kitmckeen.com. I'll, I'll ask you on the quiz, did you read kitmckeen.com? Yes, write down yes, no, no, etc. All right, cool. And then starting October 28th is when we start turning in the Acts outline. So you'll, you'll turn in chapters 1 through 7, uh, October 28th, then 8 through 14 on the 31st, uh, and so on and so forth, uh, until we finish the Acts outline on November 7th. Uh, so hopefully all that stuff makes sense there. Okay, the purpose of first, first principles. Hebrews chapter, Hebrews chapter 6, verse 1. Come on, Julius. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 1. Come on. Come on, bro. Come on, here. And I'm sure many of you have this one memorized as well. Yeah. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 1, it says, Therefore, therefore let us leave the elementary teachings about Christ and go on to maturity, not laying again the foundation of repentance from acts that lead to death and faith in God, instruction about baptisms, laying on hands, the resurrection of the dead, and eternal judgment, and God permitting, we will do so. And God permitting, we will do so. Amen. That's why we don't have on to maturity this time. God did not permit it. Okay. All right. So uh, basically, point number one here, the purpose of first principles is solidify. That just means you want to be solidified on the fundamentals of Christianity, uh, particularly particularly as that relates to our salvation. Uh, but of course, we also study out some other foundational teachings that don't necessarily have to do with, sound, uh, with salvation, but are important for any disciple to understand. Uh, and so those are, of course, in the studies as well. But we go through all the fundamentals, and we want to make sure that we're solid as disciples. Yep. Number two, John 13, 34 through 35. Come on. John chapter 13, verse 34 and 35. It says, A new command I give you, love one another as I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this all men will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. So, number two purpose of First Principles class is unity. And, and so the idea is, is that we're so unified that people can tell that we're disciples. Uh, and, and so God's people uh, ought to be completely unified, which is what it says in John 
chapter 17. Yeah. And then finally, uh, the, the third purpose here, Matthew 28, uh, I'll just paraphrase it, go and make disciples of all nations, Whoa. baptizing them in the name of the Father, and Son, and Holy Spirit. And, and so, the end goal, of course, is that we actually multiply. Amen. And so, if we're solidified on the first principles, if we've been taught how to teach them, and if we're unified on what they mean, and how they apply to our life, then we can actually go out there and make disciples and, uh, and change the world. Amen. That's the Great Commission. Okay, so it also here has in the introduction of the course a few pointers about how to win people to Christ. And so these are just some general good pointers. Uh, there's not necessarily any checklist that wins someone to Christ. Uh, so obviously everybody's different. God's working in people's lives differently. But these are some, in general, good guidelines for helping someone how to have a relationship with God. Number one, it's good to build a good friendship with them. That's, uh, of course, very important because we're not in the business of just telling people what to do, but we're also in the business of getting to know people, having great talks with people, sharing our life with people, having them share their life with us, and, and then loving them and encouraging them and giving them an example of how to follow Jesus. Uh, so we want to build a great friendship with anybody that we're studying the Bible with. Uh, the second guideline here is to find out their background. That's kind of involved in point number one there a little bit. Just sharing our life and, uh, and then hearing their life as well. And, and it's good to know people's religious background. So for me, when I started studying the Bible, I was an atheist. Uh, and so the guy studying the Bible with me needed to know that so that we could talk about where my faith was at, uh, you know, as it compares to the scriptures. Uh, now, I was also raised Catholic, so after I got over my atheism, I also had a lot of questions about Catholicism. And so that was important, too, so we could talk about those different things. It's good for us to know what are the actual beliefs of the people that we study the Bible with. Right. And we can share our beliefs and what we've been through and how our beliefs have changed over the years as well because of the Bible. Uh, number three here, ask your friend to study the Bible. Okay, that's very important. Uh, so if you need to know somebody, you actually want to ask them to study the Bible. Uh, if you don't actually ask them to study the Bible, then they probably won't study the Bible. Uh, although there are people that sometimes do ask you to study the Bible. Uh, case in point here is Antonio, who is studying the Bible right now. Antonio saw Manny having a quiet time and walked up to Manny and said, Hey, I want to study the Bible. Wow. And that's actually how Antonio started to study the Bible. But generally speaking, uh, that is fairly rare. Uh, and so we do actually want to ask people, hey, would you like to study the Bible and invite them into that uh, teaching? Okay, number four, it's a good general guideline to actually buy the person you're studying the Bible with a Bible. Uh, now, people sometimes do have their own Bibles, but a lot of times they're older versions of the Bible that are hard to understand. Uh, say, for example, the King James Version or something like that. And just as a token of your friendship and your mentorship, it's just nice anyway to get them a Bible from you as a gift. And what I like to do is I always, you know, write in the presentation page, you know, it's from Aaron to, you know, whoever, Miguel or whatever. And, and then I write underneath of that, you know, the date. And then I write a little passage, you know, just to encourage them. So whenever they open up their Bible, they can always see that message that personal message that I wrote to them. I might have a little scripture in there uh, or something like that, uh, just as a token of our friendship and my encouragement to them to continue in their walk with God. And, and so that's always a, a super nice gift to give to somebody that you're studying the Bible with. Okay, uh, number five, if they're an unbeliever, it's good to start with the book of John. Uh, it actually says in the book of John that the purpose of it being written was so that people would believe in Jesus. And, and, it's, and it's written to not just the Jews, but also the Gentiles. And so the audience that the gospel is written to is more of a general audience of people who need to build their faith in Jesus being the Messiah. And so that's actually where I started studying the Bible. Because I was atheist, I sat down once a week and I, we read through the book of John. And boom, here I am. Oh. Hey. And so it can actually change someone's life uh, to take that time and really teach them who Jesus is and the character of Jesus from the Gospel of John. Uh, so that's huge. Uh, now, if somebody already believes in Jesus, then it's best to just go straight to the Seeking God study uh, because you can start getting into what does it look like to have a relationship with Jesus. Uh, and since they already believe, um, you can start that right away, which is a good thing. Um, to start talking about that right away so you can lead them really to the truth and so that they can be saved. Amen? Amen. Cool. Uh, so when you get into a Bible study, it also says here that you want to bring another disciple with you to take notes. 
uh, so that they can support you as you study the Bible with that person. Amen. Cool? All right, so uh, one thing I forgot to mention is we also have the scripture memory. So uh, when we take the quiz, you'll also need to memorize uh, these different passages depending on which session we're in. So when we take our first exam on Sunday, you'll have to memorize Jeremiah 29.11 and Matthew 6.33. All right, cool. So that's the introduction. Now we're going to get into our first study, Seeking God.